morning. It is now Friday the 15th. So, um, yeah, I got the Algerian eyelets finished around the edge last night and I'll talk you through that in a little bit. So they're all done in all of their, in all of their glory. So they look really nice. I don't know if you can see the hole through the center of them because I can, but it's just the fact that I've got dark trousers on today. So let me put a piece of paper underneath. That might help. No, it doesn't. But if I move it away like that, you can maybe see where, yeah, there, you can see the hole in the center a little bit. So they're done um, all the way around the edge. So I think that's some sort of like hedge border, I think it's described as. And then there's some beads or a big bead to go here. Um, just to sort of finish that off but at the moment I have got some sort of um, like gold back stitching to do just to pick out some of the features and then around the edging as well um, just to sort of really enhance the borders so this is like um, a gold color which I'll get out in a minute but I'm sort of wondering how to you see normally when I backstitch, you know, I like to do a run of it. So in these shorter bits, I'll be able to, but in an ideal world, what I'd love to do, and I know I can't because it's too long, is I would do like a, I'd want to do like one single backstitch down here to make this border really pop and then follow the zigzags along on the corner, a long strand, but I know I'm not going to be able to do that. So it's at what point do I sort of stitching maybe I'll go with the center of each of the eyelets potentially and sort of stitch over three stitches because what I don't want to do is do it over one and then it just end up disappearing do you, do you know what I mean into the the rest of it I want it that border to pop because it's quite a bright vibrant gold <laughs> so I'm gonna get that color out consult the pattern and then I'll be back with you to tell you about the rest of my birthday yesterday so I'll catch you in a wee while I'll see you in a bit there we go so we're about ready so the um, <clears throat> kind of back stitching is done in this really bright P, uh, PB40 which um, it's gonna look pretty nice I reckon so I'm just gonna go ahead and thread up my needle so my, uh, let me find the end of this first before I start talking. <laughs> I think that's the wrong end I want to try and pull. Where are you? I can see two ends in front of me here and I can't work out which is the actual end. Oh, hang on, I'm going to pull that there. That little thread, that seems to be doing its own sweet thing there. What's, what's that going to do? i pull that. Oh, there we go, found an end. <laughs> I guess that's the, the bit I wanted. I'm not going to cut this too long. Um, I was saying yesterday how much more straightforward it is to stitch with than, than Krennic or Krynic. Um, <clears throat> however, still, you know, you know, with all metallics, they're, they're okay, aren't they? I mean, I, th I think the effect is worth it. Um, it's, a, it's worth the pain, but actually you know, threading them and, and working with them is, is something else, isn't it? So, let me just push that through. Marvellous. A first time thread. And I'm just going to flip this over. I'm going to start on this top kind of motif here. And I'm just going to capture this underneath a couple of threads before I bring it through. And I'm just going to follow the shapes. Um of the design really so last night so I did get to finish the eyelets eventually but um, my parents came round and they've never seen my Chatelaine they, so they were the first visitors last night so I'll tell you I'll tell you what happened and what I got uh, so I'm going to just zoom in um, to get to the point where you might be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing so yeah, so they came around first, they were my first visitors. So not long after I stopped recording, they arrived, um, which was lovely. And they've never seen my Chatelaine ever. Uh, they had sort of no real idea. So I am going to jump because I think if I don't, 
then this gold may or has a chance of getting lost. Let me just take the twist out of that a little bit because it's just rotated as I've learned the thread. That's better. And get the best. You know, the, the, the widest part of the thread showing if I can. I mean, maybe I'm being a bit too picky and it, perhaps it doesn't really matter that much. I don't know. Um, but I just want to, you know, maximise the opportunity for the gold to pop. But anyway, yeah, so there's all the Chatelaine. Um, and, and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what people would think who aren't, who are non-stitchers. Do, do you know what I mean? I mean, we know how amazingly gorgeous they are as stitches you know I think we appreciate it I mean and I've finished you know some good heaven and earth designs and you know I mean I always get you know really positive comments about how lovely they are but I I don't think people really anticipate you know what we go through and the amount of artist artistry that's actually involved even in just cross stitch alone never mind something like this well I mean my dad being an artist um I mean, he just looked at it, he was like, wow, I mean, gosh, what's that? Um, so I was telling him what it was and, and showed him, obviously, the mock-up of what it would look like when it was fit, when it's finished. And he was like, wow, my goodness, that's amazing. And my mum was like, wow, that's awesome. Look at all the, the, the shiny bits in it and how amazing it looks. Um, so I was showing them the bead stash and, and all the different types of threads that were in it. And they were just like oh my god that's amazing and uh, you know that I showed them the center bead and they were they were just gobsmacked um, that you know firstly I was stitching it and secondly you know what it what it was um, so they were really impressed I mean my mum said my goodness this lot must have cost you quite a bit and I was like yeah it did um, but she said, oh, it's lovely. She said, I can't wait to see that progress. So I was like, you know, when you're just pleased that, you know, somebody, Daisy, stop it. Daisy's tapping on the, the doors to go out. She doesn't really want to go out. Um, she's just been annoying. Yeah, so that was a really good reaction from my parents. Um, so yeah, they were, they were really, really impressed by it. So that was nice. So they... Yeah, they came round and stayed for a couple of hours and as I said they're taking me out for dinner tomorrow night which will be Saturday and um, they brought me another one of my favourite perfumes for my birthday which is Marc Jacobs Decadence. It's the one with the, the little green bag. Um, that It's lovely. It's it's one of my favourite perfumes. I really do like that one. So they bought me a nice, a nice size bottle of that and then this thing I've never seen before. Um, it's like a, a dispenser you can take on the on the go. So my mum was thinking, oh, with you travelling, I travel a lot with work, don't I? That I would probably find that really useful. So it's like this descent, descent, dispenser that you can decant some of the perfume um, out of the bottle and into um, into this like little dispenser. So you can take it on the go, really, and you don't have to take the full bottle which I thought was incredibly useful and also will be really good for for when I'm working and in the car, you know, I can just, you know, freshen up on, on while I go. Daisy, would you stop it? It's because I started this. She's seen me sit. Does anybody else's pets do this? They watch you sit and then the minute they see you get yourself organised and sorted, they then want something, like she's not needed anything all morning so far, but now she needs something. She walk, come away from the door. Yeah, this is twisted. Let me just back that up. I wanna, I wanna get the twist out if I can. Just try and make it lay a bit better because these two have laid really nicely and then there's always one, isn't it? I'm just gonna, actually, I'm gonna take this off my needle because trying to back up in between um, the, the actual silk threads. I don't want to end up splitting the silk trying to pull this back, if you get what I mean. I'm just going to re-thread. I'm not going to back the camera back up, so bear with me. There we go. Daisy, I'll not ask you again. Don't look at me like that. Stop tapping on the door. Let's 
it's a little bit better I guess. And I'm just going to put one straight over the top, that sort of way. Oh, how pretty does that look? Oh, so nice. That, just that little detail, isn't it? Oh, wow, what a difference a bit of backstitch makes. And I hate backstitch. I'll not, you know, absolutely hate it. <laughs> but not on this. It does make such a difference, so, you know, all joking aside, I mean, I know none of us, not many of us are a fan of backstitch, but, you know, on something like this, it really does make a difference. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? That really does make a difference, doesn't it, from the rest of it, you can see what it was originally. Right, okay, then I'm going to fasten that off, um, and then see how much thread I have left. Bear with me while I back this up. There we go. I mean, I could just travel to the next one, couldn't I? But now nah, let's not, because you know I don't want the back looking that scrappy. <laughs> Let, let's be good and and you know fasten off each section like I have been doing and try not to jump around too much. I mean, obviously it's pretty much full coverage, so you you can't see if I was to do that anyway. It doesn't really matter that much, but. I think I might take a new piece of the treasure bread actually at this point. Um, yeah, there's not enough on there to really do anything worthwhile with. I might cut the next piece a bit longer so I can get two done. Sorry, floss tube, itchy, runny nose. My cold's a little bit better actually than it was yesterday. Um, by the time my friends left last night, I was absolutely exhausted and went straight to bed. I felt horrendous. Um, so yeah, my parents left at about, I don't know, it'll be about 6.30ish and then um, my friends came, so four of my friends came round um, together and we are going out for dinner tonight but they picked up um, like a little, a little takeaway, so it wasn't loads and loads of foods, it was more like nibbly type food, so we've got um, a Greek restaurant that's not that far from where, from where I live anyway. And um, yeah, it's just maybe a little bit more healthy than, you know, a Chinese or a curry. So they went with that and brought sort of nibbly, sort of meze type stuff with them. So there was lots of salady, feta, olives, um, you know, some of those vine wrap things so it was kind of I suppose maybe that the restaurant is a bit borderline um, sort of Middle Eastern as well so there's a bit of a Middle, Inf Middle Eastern influence in it as well but I guess that's with I suppose some of the Greek history anyway isn't it so it's quite heavily influenced um, you know a bit Turkishy um, in a way but it's it's really nice food it's really tasty so we had that and just caught up um, my friends very very kindly clubbed together and bought me um, a really nice um, voucher for so and so because obviously they know my passion for all things stitchy so I will be able to spend that over the next you know while um, it should stock me up in you know some new patterns and I could be able to kit a couple of things up um, with that money as and when I choose so that's nice because I do want to kit up oh what is she snapdragon my other smaller Nora Corbett so I did Lily didn't I I finished Lily then I've got the fabric for snapdragon but I haven't I haven't kitted her up yet I probably do have a lot of the colours anyway so I'll need to go through my stash and pull those and see what I need um, but I don't have the beads for her I think there's only a couple of colours she's not a you know, massive um, a massive design so there's usually a couple of shades of beads in them isn't there so I got that uh, which was lovely um, a surprise because I, I really wasn't expecting them to do that and you know when you're just a bit I don't know, I was a bit blown away that they'd actually thought about it to that extent, <laughs> you know, because I was expecting, I don't know, um, you know, cinema, cinema tickets or, 
oh, I don't know, or a, an Amazon voucher or something, because ten, that tends to be what we do, because, you know, I'm often on there buying certain things, you know, from time to time. So, yeah, no, they did that, which was lovely. So, yeah, I did quite well. I was quite spoiled this year, so it was lovely. Um, I just wish I'd felt a little bit better yesterday. So by the time they left, which was about 10.30, I, I was debating, you know, maybe picking this up. Had I felt better, I might have stitched or worked a little bit on steam heart, but I just went to bed and then I slept. I laid in this morning until it was almost 10 o'clock when I dragged myself out of bed. Um, so I really, I really did sleep in. And I think that was part of the issue was I was tired. I didn't sleep very well at the hotel. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a, a daisy piece of fur underneath the gold. Got it. Um, I didn't sleep very well at the hotel on Tuesday night before we did the meeting on Wednesday and the bed was really hard. Really, really hard bed. And you know when you're trying to lay on your side and the, you, you, the bed's hurting your hip bone. I mean, I've got, you know, trust me, there's plenty of pad in there so it really shouldn't be causing me that much pain. Um, it's not like there's not enough padding to support it but yeah I was really uncomfortable in that bed um, yeah and I probably got about four hours of sleep and then having driven to London that day and then dinner managers meeting and driven to the driven from London on the Wednesday <laughs> sorry I'm still a bit snivelly aren't I sorry for sniffing um, I was I think I was just overly tired I think that's what it is um, but you know, I'll recover over this long weekend anyway, I'm sure. So tonight I'm out with the girls, as I was saying. So we've got a restaurant booked in the town that's not that far away from us. So it's, it's a bit of a mixture in terms of the types of food they do. It's like, it's more of a gastro pub. Daisy, will you stop it? I'll just finish this bit, then I'll have to go and let her out because she's driving me nuts. Um, where's this one going? Just wait, let me count. Mm, pets, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I love it a bit, but gosh. So yeah, it's a it's a gastro pub. Um, so it's 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 really nice food actually that they do. So we go in there. I've not been in there in ages. How many is that right? I just need to check where I am. One, two, three, four. Seems to be, it just feels like. Oh, she's given up knocking now. Look, she's coming to sit next to me. Oh, Daisy, you are annoying. Get off me. She's now put her head on my arm, so I find it hard to stitch. Daisy, you can't see her. Honestly, I'm going to back it up a little bit so you can. Maybe you can't. No, you can't. She's out of frame. Um, but her head is on my right arm now, and it's resting quite heavily. Get off. Get off. Get off. So she does this when she wants to disturb. Honestly. Now she's jumping behind me and she's coming down the other side. So she's laid, there you go, she's laid down on the other side now. So no, Daisy did not want to go out. Um, she just wanted to pester and annoy. Yeah, so we go into this, this pot, uh, restaurant and then yeah, we'll just have a couple of drinks around um, the town and probably head home. So it's not going to be a, a mega late one. So I'm just trying to, <laughs> not doing very much today. Because as I said, I am feeling a tiny bit better, but I don't want to, you know, do any exercise. I, you know, I'd like to go on the spin bike, but I think that's probably a step too far. I don't know whether this is right, you know. It is. That seemed to... One, two, three, one, two, three. How many have we got here? One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, it's right. It's because I haven't put all the stitches in yet. I'm sure as soon as I do that. So I'm just rotating the treasure braid from underneath just to make it lay completely flat. Um, but this, oh my goodness, it's so sumptuous, isn't it? It looks amazing. Yeah, and then of course tomorrow night and then out for dinner again with my parents and we're going to, I'll back this up now, we're going to, um, oh God, that makes such a difference, look at that. Oh my God, blinked 
fantastic. Oh, I love my Chatelaine. <laughs> Everybody should get one. Everybody should do a Chatelaine and, and do videos like this and I would just watch them all. Love to see how things like this develop and progress. And I think, I, you know, a lot of this I will do. It's not live, is it? But sort of stitch with me type things and, you know, stitch along and, and you know, extended vlogs like this, I think, because this is the sort of video I would want to watch. So if anybody has a Chatelaine um, or is thinking of doing one, please do a video like this <laughs> or as many as you can because I would watch them all. Um, I love to see things like this develop. I, I, I like Heaven and Earth ones as well. I like, well, I like any, any video like that as well. I like Chatty Stitch With Me's. I know I've said that before. Um, you know, I do, I do enjoy them. So I'm just going to move um, this and we're down the bottom now. So let me zoom you back in while I do this next, this next one. I don't want to zoom you in too far and then you're not able to see because I'm aware you might end up disappearing off the, I'm going to disappear out of frame. Might not be quite enough treasure bread to get around the whole one, but that doesn't matter. No, I'm not going to be wasteful. I can't wait to do some beading at some point. I think um, I might I might do um, an upload at some point. Um, where I'll do some beading on this. A couple of people have asked me to do a beading video and um, you know show me how I bead, that show, show you how I bead. I mean I, I, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat isn't there and I don't, if it works for you it works for you doesn't it? I wouldn't say you know I'm an expert, yes I do make jewellery, yes I, I do beading jewellery and you know I have beaded many Nora Corbett Mirabilia's and patterns over the years, Mill Hill kit, so you know, nothing's fallen off yet, so <laughs> you know, by default I would consider myself a decent beader because everything seems to stay put where I want it to, which is kind of half the battle really, isn't it? So I will I will do that and I'll do it on my Chatelaine actually, because it would be nice, wouldn't it, to to place some beads together on that I think so I will I will definitely film that um, as a you know a similar type of style to this maybe in the next couple of weeks or so perhaps I am desperate to bead on it but I don't I don't I'm not going to do it today I'm not going to start beading on it today I just want to get some of these more more fancy bits done. Oh my goodness, it does make such a difference, doesn't it? It's just lovely. Reminds me of like a corset. It's been, you know, it might be a nod to, to that sort of thing, you know, with the style of the dresses and and things like that, it could well be like corseted. I mean, everything has a you know a bit of a reason for it, doesn't it? And it's just how it's you know portrayed through a chatelaine, isn't it? It's just they're just amazing. I think I think having done this, I am always going to have a chatelaine in the works. And I didn't realise how much I would love it. I, just, I didn't think, I wasn't sure whether I would like them. I, I genuinely wasn't sure whether I would like them. Um, because, you know, I'm a, a cross-stitcher at heart and I didn't know whether or not, firstly, I would be able to do the specialty stitches or secondly, whether I would really enjoy it to that extent. But, oh my God, I just love it. 
And everybody who has one or is working on one says the same thing, so why wouldn't I like it? You, do, do you know what I mean? I don't know why I wouldn't like it. I think I might gonna be running out of thread here. I don't know if I've got quite enough. Oh, it's gonna be tight to go back over. And if I haven't, I'll just release and go back. Oh, it's going to be marginal. Let me just pick up there. I think just enough. Gosh, tell you what, that is just enough. Oh, I'm lucky. Lucky jammy person. There we go. Right. Oh, it slipped out the end. <laughs> Never mind. I can fasten that off. That is not a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the last one of these because you've seen three of them. So I'm going to stitch the fourth off camera and then we'll come in and stitch in the next area where I need to, to do this. And you can do that little bit with me too. So I'm going to re-thread my needle, fasten it off, stitch that fourth one and then come back and join you in a minute. So I'll see you soon. Bye. So there we go. I've got all of the sections now stitched in. Looking really, really pretty. It looks nice. And then we're off into these top corners now. So let me just work out where I need to be. Oh, there's not that much to do up at the top there. Uh, it's just around this, these sort of, look like, acorns to me but I'm sure they're not but <laughs> they remind me of acorns I'm sure they're like some sort of fur de lis or something like that maybe I don't know I don't know um, but I might have enough thread on my needle to stitch one of them anyway I think I do I think I do so I probably just need to adjust that camera a little bit so you can see it a little bit better let me back up slightly yeah, and that could work. So I'm just going to flip over, work out where I roughly need to be. So I think it's right about there. So I'm going to just tack that on the back again as I usually do. Um, I'm not going to back the camera up again because I've just got us into shots. So I'm just doing the usual of just fastening this through a couple of threads on the back. And then we'll pick it back up again. <coughs> there we go. Oh dear, that was a big uh, yawny side daisy, wasn't it? Um, and then the first one sits there. It's rotating that braid around from the back just to make it lay completely flat. I don't want it to twist. I don't know if you can hear the wind outside. It's still blowing a gale here. It's, it's ridiculous. We've had, I think, well, we had a storm, as I mentioned yesterday, so we had Storm Gareth. Um, which was supposed to have passed really um, and it just hasn't stopped blowing a gale so we've got winds here of about between sort of 50 to 70 miles per hour which I know for many people it's not a lot but wow we've had some humdingers of windy nights just lately it feels like we're getting a lot of wind storm at the minute I'd, I'd say it's been like a thing. We, we never had a thing of storms here like you would you would put on the news and you know there were certain hot spots in the world where you would expect to see really high winds and storms being you know spoken about. But for, for the UK to have named storms and, and winds of that degree is really really unusual. I mean I know we're into unprecedented times with you know, the change in environment and global warming and things like that, but it, it it's really becoming apparent and noticeable, um, you know, in quite a big way as well. 
know, I don't think anybody would be that naive not to have noticed the amount of crazy, crazy weather we're getting in the UK. I mean, I think it might even snow today. So we've got snow forecast over this weekend where I live. I mean, we've got blue sky at the minute and sunshine, um, but it's really windy and there's a real cold snap in the air you know you, you know some things potentially looming we're halfway through march so we know we're not safe from snow and frosts and things well we're not snow uh, safe from frost until you know we're well through may in this country we can still have that kind of weather even then i think that looks that looks nice up there in that corner so that's all i need to stitch around each of those shapes which is quite nice i'm just gonna flip back over again let me just back it up for you and then just fasten fasten this through you may be able to hear that I'm sat right by the, the, the doors in the kitchen so for the light but I'm suspecting you can hear it <coughs> every now and again something will go flying outside you know somebody's something in their garden goes uh, is blown out or goes whizzing by and you hear bang 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 as it as it goes <laughs> but it's uh, it's certainly wild uh, so i'm going to stitch another one of these with you and then i'll probably stitch the other couple alone and and then come back as we start to run this gold right around the edge and i'm still debating how to to do that we might try a couple of different ways as I do it um, you know the thing is with this I don't really think there's any right or wrong way yeah because that's going to sit sit there you see um, and I know it's too far away for you to really get a feel for it but I want I want it to stand out I mean it does anyway doesn't it because it's so bright but I do want it to stand out. But we'll have a go. It's like it's like anything with stitching. I don't think there's a real right or wrong way, is there? I think it's just whatever you think is right. And I'm sure I'll do it one way and then I'll get comments in the comments box saying, oh, you know, maybe you should have tried it this way or I wouldn't do it like that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all individual preference, isn't it? I don't really think it matters that much. As long as you're happy with the result, you know, even if your specialty stitches don't look quite right or, you know, they're a little bit different to what they're supposed to be, it doesn't matter as long as you love it. Um, you know, I'm a, big, I'm a big believer of that. Yes, it's nice to have, you know, good technique and things like that, but, you know, I'm not part of the, you know, Royal College of Embroidery. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I do this for fun. This is, this is my little, um, you know, bit of happiness and joy in life. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it. Yeah, I'll stitch this one, and, and then when I come back, I'll tell I'll tell you the story now. So, out of the blue, I only found it this morning, and I'm glad I only found it this morning because I think I would have been a little bit annoyed otherwise and I wouldn't have slept very well last night so you know everybody who's followed me for some time knows my personal life situation um, so I've been single now it's actually it's just over 18 months um, and I'm completely happy and I've spoken about you know this relationship you know, in various stitch with me and things like that. So you all know, not not the great detail about it, but you all know it wasn't a fabulous relationship. And, you know, at the time when you get caught up in things, you think, you know, it's it's the best thing since sliced bread and, you know, you'll, you'll do just about anything to make things work um, to the detriment of yourself, really. And that's the situation that I'd found myself in. So I haven't heard from this person. Well, it's that's not true. So this person, every now and again, will get in touch. But I haven't heard from them at all since, gosh, I want to say last Christmas. Yeah, for over a, 
over a year. So that first six months, there was, you know, some email contact still going on from that person. He sent me flowers when he found out I was being ill. So I was ill a couple of years ago. No, 18 months ago. Can't quite remember. But when I was ill, he sent me flowers. And yeah, but, but at that point, the relationship was on its last legs. He periodically tried to make contact with me. Um, sorry, I'm just twisting the back to try and make this braid just sit really straight. And it will if I rotate. There we go, it's pinged around now. Um, and then at half past seven last night, he decided he was going to text me. Uh, not text me, email me to wish me happy birthday. Um, you know, you just think, why? Why would you do that? What, what are you wanting from me? Do, do you know what I mean? Why would you make contact? And I know, you know, you don't have to split up from relationships in a, a non-amicable way. Amicable way. And, and, I, and we didn't, we just, it just sort of ended. Um, but for all that time to have passed and then you, sorry the birds are going crackers now. I think they're having their say about the whole thing. Um, yeah, they don't like him either, clearly. But then to just out of the blue, just drop somebody a message. I don't know what he's trying to achieve by that. I mean, surely, you know, through this time, I would have moved on and sorted myself out. It just, it just surprised me somewhat. You know, you never can, you know, preempt what people will do, can you? It's just, it was so bizarre. Um, and it's only by, you know, pure chance that I checked my emails, really, and saw it this morning. Um, bizarre. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you, so I'm not sure what is after. I don't really care because I won't be responding because that person wasn't, um, you know, something I, you know, something I wanted in my life um, or a situation I want to be in anymore with somebody who, yeah, clearly isn't right. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you, but I'm going to carry on now, stitching the other couple of these little little images and then I'm going to come back and we'll have a look at what we're going to do around these edges here um, and decide how many stitches I skip over might mm. yeah we'll see um, I'll catch you in a little bit take care bye okay so the gold bits are all in now so now I'm going to re-thread my needle with this PB40 and have a think about how I'm going to do these edges. So I've basically got to stitch around the outer edge and then there's a section here, so in between where this purple and this um, the, the silicolame is, I've also got another layer. So I kind of want them wherever I make the decision to stitch. I, I would probably want this to match as well. Um, interesting this is going to be. Um, I'm not quite sure and it may take me a little while to, to decide how I make the decision as how far I spread them. It's going to be, it depends on what it looks like and I suppose it's only when you start that You'll know, isn't it? So my needle's threaded. I'm just going to catch onto the back here on the edge. I'm going to do the outer edge first, I think. Because once you've stitched this, there's, there is a bit of a gap before other sections of the mandala come in. <coughs> um, so there's, I don't know, maybe a tiny bit of dead space here. And then you've got some beading and then the vegetable patches start on each of the corners. So, you know, you, 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 this is important that this bit pops. Uh, I'm just gonna move my, my frame and, and zoom us in. I want us to get onto this 
bottom layer or care but zoomed in give you a good angle nope that's not a good angle there's no bottom of it on zoom in a bit further you know maybe it'll be a case I don't make a decision today and you know you guys help I don't know um, I need to still be out more just so I can get you the best vantage point going see how generous I am that's pretty good isn't it I think I'll have to just support this because it's rocking a little bit because it's on the joint of two tiles so this bit here is straightforward because I'm just going to follow the outline of the stitches anyway so that's less important um, where's my needle it's just dangling on the edge um, I mean in an ideal world you know what I want to do don't you but I'm not going to do it and I can't do it really because you know the tension might never be the same as this again um, I want to literally just do that you know you know that's what I want to do um, but you know I don't know whether or not this would this would sag and, and I suspect it would this is always a dilemma isn't it with with back stitching so the question is is how many stitches you go along because if I do them all let, let's try um, like a running back stitch in the first instance where I stitch every one and I don't and I don't skip so I'm going to do like you know like a typical running back stitch and just give the braid the opportunity to lay flat each time you know what, I think that's probably the best option. Looking at that, you know. Yeah, I don't know how well that's standing out in terms of colour for you. But, you know, it's given a nice, it's actually given a nice line. If I was to skip maybe three or two or three, so I'll skip two and and stitch it that way and see what that looks like. I mean, again, that looks pretty good. This is it, this is all going to just come down to a choice, isn't it? At the end of the day, that looks okay. Now, does that pop more than the other? No, I don't know. It's too confusing. And what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Because if I do it too, then I'm not really working in line with the eyelets above. You'd you'd probably have to maybe do three. What does three look like? For it to work with the pattern. There's two, there's three. I mean, that's sitting okay. Mm. I think I like the three. Let me do another three. So it's like going over to the edge of the eyelet and then down. Yeah, I think you can see a fair bit of the gold. I'm going to zoom you in. I mean, I know there's no right or wrong with this. It doesn't really matter that much. It's not the end of the world. It's a centre mandala. Who's going to really see? That's the options. So we've got a single back running stitch down there. And, th and three. Um, because of the nature of the fact that I'm stitching with a treasure braid I think to get it to lay flat and show to its best advantage a three might be a little bit better although that looks okay oh I don't know decisions decisions I don't know what to do 
I mean it's a small part of the design you know because the other areas I've stitched it doesn't really matter that much oh gosh I used to be indecisive but I'm not sure now <laughs> Oh gosh, right, obviously I have to pick this out, don't I, because I'm, so, I'm trying to look through the viewfinder at what seems to be sitting nicer. I honestly don't know. I, I, I don't dislike any of them as far as choices go. I mean, obviously when I work the corners, it's going to be what, like one stitch? Um but that doesn't make any difference if I've got like a stretch of three and um, I think I think I'll go with the single let me go with the single and see I'll do a bit more of it and see what it looks like it's already there that one's pulling tighter anyway because it's not laying I mean oh, I tell you first world problems eh I'm sure there are many people in the world who would wish that this was the only decision they had to make in life right at this moment in time yeah I think I think the singles will be will be okay um, it's it's just an edging, isn't it? And you know, and then it's a case of working out whether the three stitches are going to fit because I may end up with, you know, one on the end where there's only two. Um, you know, it can only span two stitches because there's not enough of them. I think, in all fairness, be, you know, to to minimise issues with counting and making things fit, I'm just going to do. You know, a running back stitch like that. I think that's probably the best solution. Probably the only solution, really. And it seems to be behaving itself and sitting okay. What do you think? I mean, it's not going to stand out a mile because it's a the petite treasure braid along the edge but I think it's doing just enough that there's a nod to it on the pattern you know it's is it it's subtle and and it's supposed to be subtle isn't it otherwise you'd be doing a cross stitch um, layer of this in but yeah I think this has been the best decision it's gonna take a wee while to do it but, you know, with with all things like this, you know, there's no rush for the chatelaine. I mean, I think this is going to take a number of years to stitch. I don't really mind. It's a bit of a, a project. And it's all, it's all a learning journey as well. This is what I really like about this. I'm learning different things all of the time. And I do, I do want to expend, expand my repertoire, you know, of... Of stitching, um, you know, to to other types. I mean, obviously, I cross stitch is like my main step, but I have done some black work, so I know I can do that. But you know, the black work, am I doing it right? Am I forming the stitches in the right way, or just how I want to form them? So I'd probably like to do more of that. I would like to do some hard hanger as well. I quite like the look of that. A few people have have embarked on that journey. I wouldn't mind trying a bit of hard hanger. But there's there's so much, isn't there? There's like the the long stitch, like the tapestry long stitch and things. You know, with my with my um so-and-so voucher <laughs> that I've got, I might be able to expand my repertoire some more, might I? Maybe I think they sell hard hanger kits, maybe choose a hard hanger kit and, and start that perhaps. That might be um you know, a, a different tack or a different type of journey. I might buy the um, 
the Mirabilia Mermaid I'm interested in as well. It's, uh, was it Enchanted Mermaid? I like the mermaid. I wouldn't say I'm the hugest fan of them. They're, they're okay. Um, but the Enchanted Mermaid is is one I could definitely stitch because I never thought I would stitch a mirror mermaid. I mean, they're beautiful, don't get me wrong, but I just didn't envisage I would ever stitch one. I do like the ladies. Um, but that Enchanted Mermaid is, is quite something. I think it's because she's got a significant bead pack with her and there's a lot of treasures and stuff attached to her too which is you know nice so yeah I think I might potentially do her let me just check I haven't snagged it on the back bear with no 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 it's pulling nicely so I don't want to end up with um a snag and then it starts to unravel, you know, later and then you're trying to tack it down on the back. This is working out okay. I think I could be here for a long time. But I'm glad I've made that choice. It seems to make decent sense, I think. So what I think I'm going to do, because obviously I am completely aware you do not want to be sitting watching me do a little tie, a running back stitch all the way around the entire edge of the mandala, <laughs> is turn the camera off, um, get myself sort of settled in, put something decent to watch on the TV. I'll tell you what I am watching, which is really good. I started watching it. It's been a four part drama over this week and I like to save like drama series up so if things are like six weeks long I don't watch them I'll just record all of them on Sky or pick it up on Netflix or I'm not on Netflix or catch up or whatever and I'll watch all of them back to back because I, I can't like sit and wait for the next one I just I'm not like that so I like to watch the run of them so there's been um, a drama on here in the UK this week, which I watched the first part last night before I went to bed, so my, as I said, my friend left. Um, it'd be about half past ten, and I watched the first part, which would be about 45 minutes by the time you fast forward all of the adverts. Um, and it's um, Cheat. I don't know if anybody in the UK has watched it. Oh my god, it's like a psychological thriller. Um, so, so good. So I think I might put the next instalment of that on while I wend my way around my mandala here um, just doing this because this is, this is something I don't particularly need to concentrate on I'm not really counting am I I'm just following the edge which is fine but I think I think this I think I've definitely made the right choice here and I think it's just adding enough of a pop for you to know it's there in the way that obviously these little acorn things here there's just enough of a nod to um, a bit of gold just to make it live I can't wait to see this centre bit beaded, you know. I really can't. I'm like desperate to bead and and get this finished. I mean, the, the beads are just phenomenal. I um I was looking for that centre bead for my parents last night, the one that sits right in the centre. It's a flower heliotrope. And I had the the LED lights on in the in the kitchen because um, they're all sort of white LED lights that I've got in here none of the yellowy glow that's you know I've got in the rest of the house so it really does make colours pop and and these beads were just throwing off so much colour and light um, so I'm thinking then when I come to display this obviously it'll be framed and you know displayed where I need to put it in order for it to get the light hitting it you know this this wants to be somewhere in a really bright area where it's going to have the sun hitting and playing on it because those beads will throw off light it's just just stunning so i'm desperate to get some of those on because i know there's some 
nice, really nice beads in this in this center area as well. So, but I don't think that's for today. Hey, you never know. You never know. We may do some more of this over the weekend because my plan was, to be honest, to stitch on this you know, for a couple of days and then go back to Steam Heart. Um, but you know, we could make a, a longer weekend of it, couldn't we? I think once I've gone around the edge and shown you this, I think I'll upload this part because I don't want to put a video up that could be you know, hours and hours long. I don't want to do that. So I think this would be enough. Um, just kind of making that decision. I've just knotted my braid a little bit there. Yeah, I'm going to go and watch something on the TV while I finish this. So I will come back when I've done the edge and I'm starting this next layer just to say hello and then start that with you and then come back towards the end. But yeah, I'm going to. You can, see, you can hear that little knot. I'm going to see if I can get that out in a minute. I'm going to turn the camera off. Yeah, I'm going to have to because it's. It's not working very well, it's it's not happy. So yeah, I'm going to go and deal with my little knot. And uh, yeah, I'll come back when I've gone around the edge. So I'll see you in, gosh, no, uh, maybe an hour or so, I think. But it'll be like literally two seconds in your time. So yeah, the pain's going to be real, people. The pain will be real. <laughs> so I'll catch you soon. See you in a bit. Bye. So I have finished going around the edge. It actually looks really really good and I don't know whether or not this is even going to translate that well I'm just going to try and tip it a little bit but I don't know whether or not you're going to be able to see it on the camera but it looks it looks really effective and I'm glad I've stitched it as like a running back stitch over one thread it looks really really nice um yeah I'm, I'm just I'm really pleased with it I have <laughs> finished this, I've had lunch. Apologies if you can hear the dishwasher in the background. I've just switched it on and, and forgot that I was about to come back and, and finish this like second section. So I am going to um, just work out where I need to be on that, get my Timekeeper app going again. And, um, and then I'm gonna do that little section and that will be it. For now, I think, I'm going to get this video uploaded for you guys for over the weekend. I like, um, you know, I like a bit of floss tube over the weekend. So I thought, yeah, this might be nice for you guys to watch then. So I'm just going to back us up a little bit and then just tie on this thread. It's looking so nice. I know I keep saying that I'm desperate to bead it. I might film, I'm trying to think what time are we on now, it's 20 past 2, mm, I was going to maybe do later on a, you know, a bead with me and show you how I a bead on this and just start maybe a beaded section, but obviously that won't go up today but I'd, I'm just debating whether or not to record that because um, obviously I am going out later and although I don't need to start getting ready yet I'm just pulling the camera back in I probably do need to have a think about um, getting myself a bit more organized um, bear with me while I just maneuver the stand and the frame and all of that good stuff and try and zoom us in for this section oh a little bit too far there we go focus focus um, so yeah I think that's the point where I need to start. That looks about good to me. And then we'll just do this back running stitch in there as well, and just to make that pop a little bit. Bear with me while I just put my mag eyes on. I don't know why I thought for one minute I could stitch that without the mag eyes. A slightly deluded individual I am. <laughs> my eyes are getting worse. My eyesight is getting worse and I'm blaming this, you know. I mean, I know it's got nothing to do with it. I know it isn't. It's just part of the degeneration progress process and whether or not I stitch or not. But I, I do wonder whether or not this tiny close work 
bears any impact on you know my deteriorating eyesight I mean obviously my age and the fact that I'm now a year older than I was um, you know the last couple of days you know bears no semblance on that you know it's it's purely the stitching and I'm sticking to that um, but this is this is looking good this looks really nice you know the whole the whole thing is looking fab and I'm almost at the point now bar this last bit <coughs> that I'm working on now where you know the stitching for the center of the mandala is done and it is really all in the beadwork before you know and then on to the other sections and you know I do want to bead as I go I've said that so uh, you know I'm quite keen to start the beading process on it um, so yeah I'm just going to continue around this little bit here and and then I will bring you back in at the very very end and you can have a look what that looks like I've just watched while I was going around the other edge not quite fi oh, I have finished the second episode of cheat oh if you're in the UK and you've not watched it yet and you missed it um, pick it up on catch up oh gosh <laughs> it's so good honestly um, the character in it, dear me, talk about deep and devious. Wow, that's like some deviousness on a level I've never seen before. It's a great story. It really is. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, part three. There's two more parts. So I'm looking forward to watching um, part of the next one as I work my way around the edge. I think somebody's garden furniture is just blown over. I've just heard a, a big bang. So... My garden furniture is is in my garden now. Literally, it's blown off the patio area. Gosh, the poor birds. Honestly, I've just watched a few, and they're just being thrown around in the sky. It it's terrible. Um, I hope it calms down for later. I hate going out and getting you know when you've got dressed up and you get blown about in the wind. I hate that. So I'm hoping it settles down, but I don't think it's going to. So I think we've got a bit of a windy um, birthday celebration going on tonight never mind anyway i am going to get on with this and i will catch up with you when i've again completed around the edge i'll see you soon hey so this little bit is now done so i've put all of the um back stitch in and around this area and it looks fab i don't know whether or not the light's picking it up enough let me just try and zoom in on a section maybe um, yeah, I think you can probably see the extra layer of dimension that this has given to the whole of the design. So I couldn't be more delighted. So the stitching is finished in this centre mandala now. So this weekend, over the last couple of days, you've stitched with me the, the Dens Rose stitches. You've stitched some of these... Um, rice stitches we've done Algerian eyelets together <laughs> and then I've done the back stitching around this area and obviously some of the detail here and in these corners there around with the gold so I think collectively we have made some amazing progress so I am desperate to put some beads on this um, it's not going to be today, it's now gone three o'clock and I need to think about doing a few bits and pieces around the house. I want to get this uploaded and, and out tonight ideally and then obviously I need to get ready to go out with the girls. So I'm probably not going to get anything else done but what I'm thinking in terms of progress with this and what we'll do over the coming maybe two, three weeks, I do want to do... A, 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 how I bead video and I think some of these areas here will be a great opportunity to do that so I'd like to get that uploaded because I do get asked a lot of questions about how I bead so I will share that with you and then I think the next time I work on the the Chatelaine properly again you know whether that's this month or into next month I'm not sure when it will be we will do um, some of the beading sections together in a more extended stitch with me type vlog like this has been. Please let me know if you like this style, this sort of longer 
over a couple of days type of vlog because what it's given me the opportunity to do is do some different types of stitches with you rather than you know I just come and chat to you for an hour and we might you might see a few Algerian islets so let me know if this has worked this format because obviously it's a new thing um, so some people might like it some people won't but it'll be good just to get the feedback from you as if it's worked so I, as I said I'm going to love you and leave you I'm going to get this uploaded so you'll have um, you know a chance to catch up with this over the weekend I have no idea how long this is going to turn out to be I'll probably get the shock of my life when I edit it <laughs> but anyway I've really enjoyed it I, I feel as though I've covered off a lot in these you know couple of days where I have had chance to stitch it's been great fun sharing my birthday with you all um, so yeah I'm gonna get uploaded and get ready to go out with the girls so I will see you later take care bye for now bye <laughs>